Hi everyone, in this quick video, I wanna to talk to you about the three main end member types of faults that you may come across in geology. When we talk about faults, um, the main types that we talk about are what we call end members, which means that um, they can come in combinations. You can get combinations of these fault types, um, but we're gonna talk about um, sort of these individual member types on their own. So I first wanna establish a little bit of vocabulary. Um, when we're talking about faults, remember a fault um, is a plane or a break between two different um, blocks of rock. Um, these can be large, they can also be pretty small, they can be just a few meters. Um, they come in lots of different sizes. Um, but when we talk about faults, we usually talk about those two different pieces as being either the hanging wall or the foot wall. And uh, these terms are old mining terms. They come from uh, when miners uh, dig underground. And the word hanging wall refers to the block of rock um, above the miner where they would hang their lantern. And the foot wall is where the miner's feet would be, uh, where they would be standing. So in this illustration, you can see a miner um, in a tunnel with his feet on the ground in the hanging wall um, and the hanging wall overhead. When we talk about different fault types, um, the type of fault that you're looking at really depends on two things. It depends on the orientation of the fault. So wh whether the fault is vertical, a vertical plane, um, or whether it has a steep dip or whether it has a shallow dip. When we talk about dip, that is the angle that the plane is from horizontal down. Um, so if something has a zero degree dip, that means that it is horizontal. If it has a 30 degree dip, it's not horizontal, right? It's 30 degrees down from horizontal. 60 degrees would be a little bit steeper. Vertical would have a dip of 90 degrees. Another important characteristic when you're trying to determine what type of fault it is, is the direction of slip on the fault. So whether the slip is dip slip, strike slip, or what we call oblique slip. A dip slip fault is a fault in which the hanging block is moving straight down the fault, um, the fault plane. Um, whereas a strike slip fault is one that is moving side to side. So that's what we consider strike slip versus dip slip. Something that's sort of in between, let's say that the hanging wall sort of slips at an angle, um, that would be what we call oblique slip. So it's not entirely dip slip, it's not entirely strike slip, it is oblique slip, it's slipping at an angle. So we need these two pieces of information in order to determine what type of fault we're looking at. The first type of fault I want to talk about is called a normal fault. Um, these faults tend to form during extension of the crust when you're sort of stretching and pulling apart the crust. Um, we see a lot of normal faults in the basin and range province where we have active extension of the crust. Um, and in this scenario, you have the hanging wall that is moving relatively down um, relative to the foot wall. A normal fault is typically pretty, uh, has a pretty steep dip. Um, but not always. And normal faults have a dip slip motion. So that hanging wall is moving relatively down. It's not moving side to side, it's moving down relative to the foot wall. A reverse fault on the other hand um, is, it forms during shortening of the crust. So if you have um, convergence or compression in the crust, you're probably going to form some reverse faults. Reverse faults form at pretty steep angles at about 60 degrees. Um, and uh, generally what's happening here is you have the hanging wall, right? The hanging wall here is moving up relative to the foot wall, or the foot wall is moving relatively down to the hanging wall. You can say that either way. And this is another example of a dip slip fault where one block is moving down relative to another. They're not moving side to side. The third type of fault I wanna talk about is called a thrust fault. These are very similar to reverse faults. The only difference is that thrust faults have a very shallow dip of only about 30 degrees. Um, thrust faults also form during shortening of the crust. So um, scenarios where you have compression or convergence um, and shortening occurring in the crust, you'll form these shallowly dipping thrust faults. These are also dip slip faults. Then we have what we call strike slip faults. So the three previous examples were all dip slip faults. A strike slip fault is when you have two um, fault blocks that are moving side to side from one another. These tend to be vertical or near vertical, but not always. Um, you, can, you can have strike slip faults that have a dip to them. 
Um, and generally speaking, the these blocks are moving side to side to one another. So it's a very brief, quick overview of the different fault types. Um, I hope that that was helpful and that will help you differentiate the different types of faults you might come across. I'll see you in the next lesson.